take a break. <laughs> See, we talked about NA nonsense right. for half a minute, Devin. We can do it. Wow, indeed. It's, I mean, we covered ourselves pretty good, but here the players kind of show us the main event, or who can at least get to the main event as Teju starts off mighty strong with a couple of, <laughs> with a quick combo out of shield. And that's really going to be pretty huge of when it comes to playing as Bayonetta. Uh, in this matchup, Yoshi, in any matchup, Yoshi's grab is nothing really anything to fear. So you can wait for those hits and punish accordingly. A quick 70 right now as Tate. Oh, okay. That quick, that, uh, that neutral beat was pretty solid to, get, to drop down from the platforms. And Slay's making sure to keep Cheju's on it. Even with that down smash, that would have certainly killed. Now, and I also want to, there was some really fast smashes from the egg. And for those of you who don't know, the way that the mashing out of the egg mechanic works is actually the first input you do is basically locked in as long as the rest of your mashing is fast enough. And that's how he's able to consistently be getting those witch twists out of the egg. And that sort of thing is very important because it, for the most part, no real advantage has been able to be pushed from Slade. And nothing at all. And oh, <laughs> let go of the shield there. at just the right moment. To, oh, yeah. You saw he let go of his shield in between as it was rising and also at the very end. And all of the hits need to connect uh, in order for that Yoshi bomb to actually break a full shield. So actually really smart awareness from Pages. Yeah, just take take a small beaten so you don't have to take the bigger one later. And the up air was well placed, but the double jump armor, he didn't have high enough percent for the uh, lasting hit, the lingering hitbox to to break it. But and I mean, when you have this lead, is, yeah, you're, you're kind of chilling. Yeah, that, that, by the way, Yoshi will be able to break through a lot of Bayonetta's things until very high percents with his double jump armor. Um, generally speaking, multi-hit moves usually struggle to actually break Yoshi from it, and considering the fact that almost all of Bayonetta's moves are multi-hits, means that... Oh, okay, yeah. At this point, though, he needs to find the kill. How is he even going to do that? Yeah, well, I mean, Teju served it up for him on a silver platter with that witch time. If it hits, it's a basically a free a free smash attack. If you whiff, it, your opponent has a free smash attack. So the definition of high risk, high reward. Speaking of, there is no jump on this Yoshi right now, but no coverage of the ledge until too late. Uh, he used egg roll tactically to stall his recovery. Definitely Man. what happened. What is it good for if not just a little awkward spots and in, in weird moments? Your opponent is in is in stun as they see. What did he really hit side B? Like, oh, all right. <laughs> but hey, 171 now. Like, if there's anything that Bayonetta can really do, it's put on the damage, but Yoshi's weight in combination with uh, that armor, which is not going to have a, too much of an effect right now, uh, can certainly make him live for quite a long time. ABK 1, 2, still not finding anything to start with as yet another dive kick. Teju's just really thrown out so many of these aerials, like charging up the bullet arts to see if he can do anything. It's just not reaching as yet 234. I wouldn't be surprised to see a grab start coming out from Tejus to see if he can, uh, to see if they can get any sort, <laughs> just close out the kill. I bet even, well, forward throw will definitely kill, but maybe even down throw at these percents, but dash attack will seal it out. Unfortunately, a little bit later than Tejus would have liked, the 71 put on, uh, put on him in response. That's not necessarily out of the danger zone and we're, Far reaching kill percent unless uh, Tejus really makes up for <laughs> makes up for the high kill percent with a massive combo right now. <laughs> that Aguilar just went right through him. All right. But oh, that's now we've seen the fact that Yoshi is surviving until very high percent. Yoshi much heavier than you'd think he is. Uh, but another part of it is that the Bayonetta combos, Yoshi just really seems to benefit from Smash DI against Bayonetta specific, uh, like, or just in general, but like against Bayonetta, it really matters. He has just like a really weird fall speed and gravity, and it means that he can oftentimes just sort of fall out of her things. He does not go to where she wants him to. No, not at all. And it's, it's coming in, I mean, speaking of, like, Slay just is... Putting, putting aerials in spots that are like generically good spots, like fall off aerial throw out, uh, fall off the platform, throw out a back air. 
uh, come down with these down bees. Maybe you can snipe a jump or snipe an overextension, but Tejus is really like not giving it to him. And yet another grab comes out. This won't do it quite yet, even with the rage. But at 165, this game went from the stress of how does Bayonetta kill before they lose to stock on even on even playing field to you're at 180 now like it, you gotta really fish for a hardcore well, win condition technically he survived till okay dead. but he did survive until two like 60 the last stock so he had about 60 percent of breathing room you know i mean yes but your opponent is starting at zero so like you you need to do something before you eat one of these huge back airs like Part and of the survivability is being able to avoid some of these things, or Bayonet is alone killing Ariel, I guess. Ooh. Right to the eyeballs, ouch. Ooh, right <laughs> to the back of the head. Ouch. Oh. <laughs> I think that's what that just aims for the brain stem. Not that Yoshi uh, has one, but. Or is yeah. Yoshi all brain stem? No, hey, so. <laughs> Theory, big, <laughs> big theory, big, big brain theory. Yoshi's brain is in his nose. Okay, so does he just give himself a lobotomy every time he does forward air? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it, it can't be in his eyes. Those are his eye sockets. So it's got to be in the other bulbous part of him. Okay, nose. but like, didn't Stegosaurus have like brains the size of walnuts? Who's, who said Yoshi had a big brain? He made it just—he just has a big skull. I've been waiting for this. <laughs> You've been waiting for this debate about where <laughs> Yoshi brain be, despite the fact that spoiler alert, there is no brain. He's just like octopuses, just like weird neurons attached at the limbs. Hey, octopus it's a non-central nervous system. Don't sleep on octopi; they are surprisingly devious. As is Bayonetta. Wonderful trick. The octopus of Smash. Of course. You see the the Umbrian witch part, and witches are devious, therefore witches are octopus. Eldritch. Um, <laughs> Bully and monster. Um. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Starting on Smashville, just an understandable stage swap, to be sure. You're trying to make it so that, hey, Bea, you don't have place to move, you don't have place to run, and I can interact with you more. Luckily... That's exactly what Tejus has been kind of wanting at the start of this game, too, because he's approaching with uh, with some of these short hop ABKs landing uh, landing and feeling pretty comfortable in shield and then punishing Yoshi immediately after with things like Nair and letting that weave seamlessly into his full combo routes as he gets back to center with another ABK. And yet again, pressuring, uh, putting all the pressure on Slade right now with these uh, aerial hitboxes and devious uh, devious kill setups as slate is already at 180 and soon to be climbing a quick 183 now will he close it out here no he won't uh, very seamlessly getting back to ledge but you've got to wonder how long can slate keep up his survival as he does now eclipse the two century mark before getting stomped on by that downer Oh, uh, was that down or was that, that was down? Yeah. That was in fact down. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and although the fact that he took that much knockback, so because Yoshi has uh, gets reduced knockback even when his double jump armor does get broken. So whenever he's double jumping and then you see him all of a sudden just receive full knockback, a lot of the times that's because when Yoshi air dodges, the armor ends, and then it takes about two or so frames for the air dodge invincibility to actually come out. He's living. He's a thick, thick little boy. Thick frameless boy. Thick um, boy, but he had no means of escape, which is part of the the real detriment to Bayonetta. If she snipes your resources while still having her own, you can say goodbye to whatever percent you are at because you're now at 150. But yet again, that witch time a little bit overzealous and punishing Tejus for getting a little bit too trigger happy on some of his buttons some of these poles is gonna be where slade makes these comebacks but the setups from slade or even just the the slight baits on things like spot dodges or jumps they've been getting so much mileage from that and so much damage there's already a quick 20 before uh, slade has even a chance to try something of his own 
another couple ABKs and Mittenbeats. The burst movement of Tejus has really been a problem for Slade, despite uh, despite Slade having Yoshi's double jump on hand. It's been well, it's if you been notice, a tough time. like the positioning that oftentimes will sort of be diagonal in a way outside of Yoshi's range, but still within range to just hit that ABK if he ever sees Yoshi do so much as hit a button. So oh, the finding a way to actually counteract or not just like throwing out moves when the opponent is out of range is going to be crucial for Slade if he's going to keep his tournament run alive right here. Oh, the witch time. <laughs> I mean, it was an active hitbox that was going to last forever. So like, yes, that's a proper time to counter. But just the fact that he recognized it and in, in previous sets we had seen... Uh, we had seen players intercept the Yoshi bomb. Nah, Teju said, I'm looking for the biggest combo I can get, and the witch time will guarantee that I have the time to close out this game. Yeah, and he had actually been doing it in that exact position earlier on in this game. So just good awareness of habits. Uh, now, in this matchup in general, it's interesting because... Bayonetta, like Yoshi is normally a character that can box very well. You know, lots of really quick aerials, you know, lots of just fast moves in general. But against Bayonetta specifically, that she has all of these strange moves that uh, actually have a lot of range is the big thing. That he sort of zips, like crosses up Yoshi before going for like, you know, these ABKs or anything like that. The fact that he's positioning himself in such strange spots. You know, Yoshi has like good aerials, but he does have blind spots in them. If he, cause like his moves that, you know, can cover them take longer to come out like forward air or back air. So if you are in his face, good to be in his face in the right spots because he might struggle to actually deal with that. And game three going to be on battlefield. Let's see how, uh, this will pan out. We've already seen Tejus loves, loves, loves those platforms more than people camping on those platforms because if the opponent ever dares to get hit while they're that high up, it can just drag all the way into. Yeah, I completely agree. But the the trade-off is like, yeah, you're gonna get comboed to oblivion, but you've already been living to like 200 multiple times this set. So, hey, why not try and extend that survivability even further, especially if you're already going to get comboed? It's a dangerous game plan, to be sure, but any amount of survivability gives you a chance for a comeback. But with the up air, uh, the up tilt, excuse me, coming out on the, on the landing trajectory of Slade, that stock is going to disappear mighty quickly, and Slade might have to be rethinking his counter pick. Not at the moment, though. He's, he's got a game to play. But he shall. Flipping eggs across the stage, not trying to do too much. Whis it, um, missing a wave land, but it's the type of patience that you really need when going into the Bayonetta matchup. Because of how dangerous some of these combos can be, especially out of Witch Twist and out of Shield. With just one, two, and a, and a couple ABKs with the finisher on top, and you're at 63. Fair one, two, three puts him at 90. Like it's 30% or, or more every opening and slade is losing so many of these neutral uh, interactions two to one so there's always 60 to 20 and eight like uh, 120 to 40 and yet another back air God, these platforms doing the opposite effect because they're giving they're giving tejus more means to support to swing back air and, and almost guarantee that it'll hit as yeah. he ran off with the border. we have seen how normally uh I don't know if... He, yeah, he does still have his jump. Uh, but normally, Slade loves those platforms, being able to move on them. You see how he wave lands on them and all of that. But there's just no room for that. The pressure that Tejus is exerting whenever he's on the platform, he's not giving him any room uh, to just to, to get any sort of cheeky movement thing started. Yeah, all right. And then, actually, right now, he's... Okay. ...giving uh... him space, or are they doing a lag test? I'm uncertain. I mean, we can definitely see that Slade is God, Slade is it's certainly trying to do to 
add to some mix up with these uh, with this uh, egg roll movement uh, and canceling it off of platforms. But I like that Tejuice will take the time, uh, quite literally in some cases, just to just to wait. He'll sit on the other side of the stage. He won't do anything immediately, but then he'll explode for uh, with an ABK forward. He unfortunately uses his uh, uses that afterburner kick in the wrong direction, leading to his forced SD after the egg lay. But those moments of time where Slade suddenly has no one around him and just has to deal with this huge deficit are huge for the momentum and the pacing of the game to always be in Teju's side. He doesn't have to do anything, and it's on. It's up to Slade to push forward like he is right now with some of these up airs, with some of these uh, back airs. But you have to wonder, is it too little too late? Teju says yes. All right, yeah, quick 3-0, actually. That's two 3-0s on both sides of uh, Winner's Quarters. No, sorry, Winner's Semis, rather. Um, meaning that we will be, in fact, be having Tejus first as Utopian Ray in Winner's Finals. Which, honestly, I'm excited to see that. We already are, you know, look at the way that Tejus exerts pressure. is constantly on top of his opponent here. Uh, I wonder how that's going to pan out against Utopian Ray, who can play slower, but also very analytical, very neutral-minded. Um, do we mind if we actually go to a quick break? All right. Yes, yeah, so I need to uh, uh, duty call. So we're going to head to a quick break, everybody. Don't go anywhere. Winner's Finals is going to be coming up right next. So see you in a bit. <laughs> 